Hey everybody, this is Eric Worry and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here at the home of John Asraf. John? Hey Eric. Uh, I appreciate this gentleman because uh, he's invited us to his home, beautiful view. Uh, but we also just finished an interview for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes or so yeah. on, uh, on network marketing. And uh, I think you're going to love what John has to say about our profession. But I thought we'd just turn our cameras on, introduce you to uh, the audience here. And uh, one of the things we were talking about in the last 45 minutes is the rise of entrepreneurialism and where network marketing fits in, the, in that rise of the entrepreneur. Um, give everybody your thoughts on what's going on in the world, why being an entrepreneur is a, is a good decision, and why network marketing for many may be a better way. Good. Well, hey, everybody. I think the first thing is people are really unhappy. And I don't mean unhappy you know, with their families. I mean unhappy with their lives, where the dream that they have for what it should be like, where they have, you know, freedom and purpose and meaning and a place where they can make as much money as possible so they can live the lifestyle that they want, there's a massive disconnect between the promise they were given of working either in corporate America and the reality of what's happening right now where corporate America doesn't have the same level of commitment and respect and promise to be able to fulfill as it once did back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And so there's an entire shift happening with people saying, there's got to be more. And so how can I, meaning people, take control of my own life and make my own decisions and basically live and die by my own sword. So if I'm unhappy, it's because of my doing. And if I'm successful, it's because of my doing. And the beautiful thing about network marketing, which I think has finally grown up, where you've got people with you know, the right ethics, the right morals, the right products, the right services, the right leadership, are stepping up and looking at this as a very, very professional industry that you know, I think we talked about before is doing 160, 180 billion dollars a year in retail sales. And so now it's got the clout that serious people are looking at this as a serious possibility and option for them. So I think the, the, the rise of the entrepreneur and the opportunity has finally met its match. Yeah, and, and um, we also were talking earlier about what builds confidence, what makes a person unstoppable, what, what causes them to act uh, and move forward in their own best interest. And, and I think it's one, uh, understanding mm -hmm. of what the network marketing profession can provide a person. Yeah. Two, our skills. Yep. What, you know, what do you need to do in order to be able to do this professionally? And three mm -hmm. is the mindset, this blueprint yeah. that either fills them with fear and apprehension or fills them with confidence. Yeah. Um, you have been a brain researcher for many years. and some of the most cutting edge research on planet Earth you have available to you and you access on a regular basis. We were talking about the four things that a person needs to do in order to be able to change their thinking. If you're, if you're self-conscious, if you have worthiness issues, if you are fearful of what somebody else might think, if you're whatever. And what can you, can you I know you remember, but what sure. was it? Reframe, re whatever it was. Yeah, the, um, the process that we were talking about earlier is called the 4R process. Yeah. And the 4R process begins with recognizing the emotions that you're having. And there are seven core emotions that people have. You know, happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, shame, guilt. Um, those are just emotions. And it's either something that's happening on the inside that's causing that emotion, something that you know, we associate with what we're doing, or something from the outside that's instigating that emotion. And so the first part of any change is to recognize the emotion that I'm feeling and not laying judgment on it, but accepting it as just energy in motion. It's either pleasant or unpleasant, something we want to move towards or move away from. So once we recognize it, the question then becomes, is it real? Is it true that I'm feeling this as a result of the meaning that I'm giving it? 
And in most cases, it's not true. It's something that we have become conditioned to believe is true because of the references or because of our own experiences that we have around that issue. And the way our brain works is anytime that we feel uncertain about something that may cause us harm or pain, a part of our brain called the reptilian brain actually activates in a billionth of a second a fear circuit which causes us to either flee, which means run away, freeze, which means we do nothing, or fight it, which means we're in most, in most cases fighting air. And so if we can reframe something, the meaning of it, long enough to let the emotion pass, that causes the third R to be activated, and that's the release of an unpleasant emotion. So, so recognize is number one. Right. Recognize it. Reframe, reframe it into, it, into the reality Correct. that it is instead of the false reality that you're giving, you're giving it more meaning than maybe a, a person that doesn't have that mindset wouldn't, re, wouldn't, wouldn't have an issue with what was brought up. Correct. So, so recognize, reframe, and then? Then release. And the easiest way to release based on the latest brain research is just to stop, close your eyes, and do 10 deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. And it has to be in a rhythmic fashion. So not 10 quick and, you know, quick in and out breath. It's just slow in and slow out. And what happens is you actually reset the two hemispheres of your brain and you interrupt the fear pattern that's flowing through your brain and your body, which is an electrical circuit and a chemical correspondence to that. And so through taking 10 deep breaths, you actually are releasing that brain wave frequency and you're releasing that emotion. And then it starts the retraining part of your brain. And what I mean by that is this, as soon as you recognize something, you're being mindful. As soon as you reframe the meaning of it, you're actually adding a component to the meaning you've given something that was different than before. So you're changing the actual pattern in your brain. By learning how to just release the emotion, you're repatterning the negative or unpleasant emotion into one that's just neutral or even positive. And then when you start to retrain your brain by saying, I'm in control of my brain instead of me being in, or my brain being in control of me, you start to develop more confidence and certainty that, hey, I'm not my emotion. Hey, I don't have to react to outside stimuli or something that's held me back in the past. And now that gives us more confidence, more certainty, and we have more confidence and certainty, we'll tend to act in different ways that will yield better results than we've had in the past. So recognize. Recognize. Reframe. Reframe. Release. Release. Retrain. Retrain. I think that's awesome, and it's easy to remember. Yeah, four R's. And the other thing that we talked about in the documentary filming was this concept of what's really happening when somebody says network marketing is one of those stupid things and you feel awful. What's really happening when you feel awful when, so when somebody gives you that, that uh, perception? Well, when somebody is challenging your thoughts, somebody's challenging your identity, somebody's challenging your ideas, and you're allowing what they say to override what you know, in most cases, it's because you're lacking self-esteem yourself. You're lacking confidence with the product or the service or the idea. And so it really is never about what they're saying. It's about your interpretation and your automatic response to what they're saying. So the meaning that we give anything determines how we feel about it. So the question is, well, how do I change the meaning of what somebody says to me? How do I put a shield around myself when somebody says something negative to me so that it doesn't affect me. And one of the things, again, to do is instead of be in a state of reacting, be in a state of observation, be in a state of awareness of why is it when Joe or Mary or Harry or Sally said X did I feel a certain way? And it's because of the meaning that we have given things in our own minds. Hmm. And so the key is not to try and get people to say fewer of those things. The key is for us to be able to accept any kind of external stimuli and do with it what we choose. 
And is there a way that you can learn how to give anything that happens a positive meaning? That's number one. Number two, when most people have a, a, a negative comment, it's because of their experience, their story, their believability around that idea that is causing their reaction. So you can choose to accept it or you can choose to reject it. In either case, if you're the one making the choice, then you're never going to be a victim of somebody else's stimuli. And it reminds me of a wonderful, a wonderful uh, little story about Buddha. He was walking into a village and about an hour outside this village, this person came up to him and, uh, and kept berating him how silly he was, how stupid he was, how he wasn't there to serve people, he was there only for self-gain. And Buddha wasn't responding to this individual. He just kept sending him love and prayers and good wishes. And finally, just before they got into town, this guy said, well, I'm, 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 I'm antagonizing you. I'm telling you all these negative things. How come you're not responding to me? And Buddha said something brilliant. He said, listen, if somebody offers you a gift and you choose not to accept the gift, to whom does the gift belong? And so, obviously, if somebody's giving you feedback that isn't going to serve you, just don't accept the feedback. Just don't accept it as part of your truth or reality. Stay true to your own knowing. Stay true to your own confidence and certainty. And that way you'll be in control of your own destiny versus what people say or don't say. I love it. I love it. That's great advice. And I'm telling you, this guy's got a lot of wisdom about uh, the mindset required for success in network marketing or in life in general. And uh, I'm great, very grateful that he uh, allowed us and our camera crew to come here and spend a little time talking about how to do better in the network marketing profession. So, John, thank you very much. I appreciate you. you. And ladies and gentlemen, our wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. that they want, there's a massive disconnect between the promise they were given of working either in corporate America and the reality of what's happening right now where corporate America doesn't have the same level of commitment and respect and promise to be able to fulfill as it once did. And where network marketing fits in, the, in that rise of the entrepreneur. Um, give everybody your thoughts on what's going on in the world, why being an entrepreneur is a, is a good decision and why network marketing for many may be a better way. Good. Well, hey, everybody. I think the first thing is people are really unhappy. An interview for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes or so yeah. on, uh, on network marketing. And uh, I think you're going to love what John has to say about our profession. But I thought we'd just turn our cameras on, introduce you to uh, the audience here. And uh, one of the things we were talking about in the last 45 minutes is the rise of entrepreneurialism. And, and I don't mean unhappy you know, with their families. I mean unhappy with their lives, where the dream that they have for what it should be like, where they have you know, freedom and purpose and meaning and a place where they can make as much money as possible so they can live the lifestyle. Hey everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here at the home of John Asraf. John? Hey Eric. Uh, I appreciate this gentleman because uh, he's invited us to his home, beautiful view, uh, but we also just finished in